I long to see the great producers in our country turn their eyes up from their work, stir up those brains, make them discard their old almanacs and signs of the moon and imagine what a volcanic eruption we can produce in this age. Everything is progressing. Why not the farmers? Oliver Kelly personified progress. He was a tireless innovator who not only used and promoted new methods of farming, but spearheaded the first national advocacy group for farmers, the Grange. The Grange was born in the aftermath of the Civil War, but the groundwork was laid many years earlier, when Kelly was an ambitious young man migrating west. Oliver Kelly arrives in Minnesota not much after Alexander Ramsey does, and within six weeks of arrival, he is active and involved in Minnesota territorial life. He and his wife Lucy are on the organizing committee for the 1849 Fourth of July celebration in St. Paul. This young couple, literally fresh off the boat, are busy helping organize a huge celebration. Although he knew little about farming, Kelly staked a claim at the new town of Itasca on the Mississippi River. He became a book farmer, learning the latest techniques from agricultural journals. At the beginning of the Civil War, Minnesota is on this trajectory of immense growth. West of the Mississippi River explodes with immigrants and with Americans moving west and settling farms. After war broke out in 1861, Minnesota was called on to supply soldiers to fight and food to feed the soldiers. Union troops in the South and troops in southwestern Minnesota embroiled in the U.S. Dakota War of 1862. Larger armies, federal armies, well, those soldiers needed to be fed. There were several expeditions sent into western Minnesota and the Dakotas chasing after the Dakota people. And so all of a sudden Minnesota is providing food for those soldiers. With so many men away fighting, women often worked the fields. Women were left to do some of the chores that they were capable of doing um, and having their teenage sons and the grandfathers do other. More importantly, they were left to manage the farms, changing over from oxen to teams of horses and using machinery that would operate with the use of one person rather than two. These new advances in farming technology, championed by Oliver Kelly, helped make up for the absence of men. Minnesota farms were largely untouched by war, unlike farms in the Confederacy. Fearing widespread starvation, President Johnson directed Oliver Kelly to assess conditions on southern farms immediately after the war. Most of the areas he went to, there wasn't any agriculture left. The men are gone. The livestock are gone, the buildings are in shambles. Many of them lost their slave labor, and now there's no fencing. And that's what Kelly was assessing, was what is the prospect for agriculture in the South. As a member of the Masonic fraternity, Kelly moved easily through the South, eventually realizing an opportunity to improve relations between Northerners and Southerners through a new kind of fraternity, an agricultural one, that would educate farmers and help them organize and advocate for themselves. A cordial and social fraternity of the farmers all over the country encourage them to read and think, to plant fruits and flowers, beautify their homes, elevate them, make them progressive. Well, the Grange was founded in 1867 by Oliver Kelly, six other men, and one woman. It's founded in Washington, D.C. in their back office but it becomes a force in Minnesota. Grange is the first farming organization that includes women as full voting members in America. And that organization, which eventually spreads to one out of three farmers across the country, has lasting impact. And it comes out of agricultural experiences that Oliver Kelly and farmers like him had. The Grange still exists today. Recognized as the root of many of today's prominent farming organizations, groups that tie their origins to farmers who learned how to organize from the Grange. Since the
the Civil War, Minnesota has helped feed the nation and the world. Visitors to the Oliver Kelly Farm can travel back to that time and experience an 1860s farm firsthand. We do it from a 19th century perspective, which takes a lot of work. They find a place that has been here for over 150 years, a farm that's been under continuous cultivation since 1853, meaning crops or livestock have been raised and sold off years since. They find a museum that's a farm, a farm that is a museum. It is the restored 1860s farmstead. Today, this farm is important to visit because it is a safe, hands-on opportunity to explore farming and agriculture. And that it takes people to feed people, I think, is a really important lesson. And I think that's the thing that we do best here.